Then came Lambeth Council Planning Committee. Well, we're here at um, Lambeth Town Hall. This is obviously the culmination of two years' work. Um, it's very exciting, um, but I have to say, personally, I'm feeling the butterflies a little bit. <laughs> Those in favour? Can we have a recorded vote, please, mm -hmm. Chair? Right, that is carried. If we go to page 130... Yeah. They had the design, they had the planning permission, but they could see that it wasn't only the wheel which was due to soar up. Clearly costs were going to rise as well. Um, yes, David and Julia had already nearly bankrupted themselves in pursuit of their vision. To begin with, we were using our own, our own savings and our own collateral, you know, our own house was basically backing what we were doing. British Airways wanted risk-free capital from the city, which would not alarm their own shareholders. The city didn't want to know. Eventually, a German bank, a Japanese bank, and British Airways themselves agreed to carry the can between them. It had taken two years to do the deal. With British Airways in the driving seat, or rather on the flight deck, big management had taken over. David Marks, as the architect and designer of the project, worried that he'd be squeezed out, losing control of the project and the design. They wanted to take over the project at one point, they wanted to replace me as managing director, you know, I mean, all our salaries would have gone, we'd just end up being architects to the wheel, it would have ended up as a subsidiary of BA, we would have been completely swamped. A French cable car company was contracted to build the capsules. First, they prepared a mock-up but to have 60 capsules looked too expensive. The reason was the stability system, a cogged outer ring and a gearbox designed to keep the capsule upright and not turn the passengers upside down. The cost per capsule was going to be far too high. <laughs> 